Commitment to Truth, the outreach ministry of Commitment Community Church, a place for all nations. To learn more about Commitment, please visit our website, www.commitmentchurch.org. Like us on Facebook and download our mobile app. Now, let's enjoy today's message. Listen, we are continuing a series I've entitled for you, Great Joy. Great Joy. Now, what we did a little different today is this. We, we're going to sing a couple of songs on the front end, and then we're going to sing a couple of songs on the back end of the message. And, and this is the reason why. We want you to put into action what we learned today from the scriptures, okay? We want you to learn today, digest it, and then have the courage to apply it uh, as we move forward today. And what we've been learning is this, is that during this Christmas season, I just want to remind you, the body of Christ, but then also those who are seeking Jesus Christ and searching during this Christmas season to just know that through the finished work of Jesus Christ, he has given us great joy. There's this joy that is unspeakable, this joy that will never, ever, ever end. Matter of fact, the beauty of this joy, it will outlast you and it will outlast me because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the angel of the Lord uh, startled the shepherds with these words. He says, do not he fell in his uh, horrific sin of murder and and a daily involvement of God in our lives. And it's super important to recognize that God is actively involved in your life. Can you imagine when we get to heaven one day and God replays every single day of your life? Today, we can look and think about and ponder the joyful things, okay? <laughs> we don't have to go south today, okay? Let's stay north, all right? So, and he replays all, maybe all the near misses, right? You know, why did I have that flat tire? And we're frustrated and ticked off because we, had, we woke up with a flat tire in the snow. But yet maybe God was slowing you down a little bit to spare you from something, right? Have you ever th- driven by an accident and you ponder and say, well, you know what? If I was five minutes ahead, Right? How many of those situations would God replay in heaven? But, but listen, but if we are men and women who, whose minds and eyes are fixed on heaven, we should start replaying them now. We should start finding the reasons now. Make sense? Where does great joy come from now? How do we express this joy? Now, we've been blessed as a church with different cultures, cultures, different people with different uh, backgrounds, religious background that have come to the foot of the cross of Jesus. And so, so we can have a very eclectic form of worship. Some people who are excited, some people who are a little melancholy and just kind of like sitting there. Is it okay to clap my hands? Is it okay to raise my hands? You know, and they're staring at each other and, you know, and things like that. And that's okay. It's okay, but here's the deal. What is written should be done. What is written should be done. Okay, so therefore, we must now answer the question, how do we then express this transformation that has happened on the inside? How do we start letting loose the joy of the Lord, which is our strength how do we maybe stop suppressing how do we recognize if God is saying do something or if something is appropriate or safe or maybe I'm not used to or this is not my customary form of worship but yet it is written so should it be done in my life make sense remember great joy Luke chapter 10 2 verse 10 is defined as this, or the word joy, the cause or the grounds of the occasion of joy. In other words, what causes you to have joy? What are what is your grounds for joy? Why do you express joy? We all express some form of joy in many different ways. We we all 
something on this earth arouses someone with something. It could just be catching a, a big fish. And, and you're turning back flips and acting like a little child, right? But you come into the church building and you're super reserved. You know, don't let the Eagles win the Super Bowl. Right? Listen, I remember many games, many games. I see grown men with no shirt on, the chest painted, and sub-zero temperature. Because they're joyful about something. I remember uh, going to the um, U.S. Open. And this is when Tiger Woods was just a rage. Matter of fact, it was the same year as 9-11. And it was at Black Page up in New York. <clears throat> all these corporate executives, all these six, seven-figure men and women at this golf outing. And it was misty and uh, wet. Tiger Woods has all these armed, I'm talking about seriously armed bodyguards walking along them from hole to hole. There was armed uh, snipers in trees, just, just, just walking by them, just like maybe six on each side, every, every hole, just walking by them. And, but the funniest thing in it all, if you could find humor in that, was all of these super hyperly influential wealthy people slipping, sliding down holes, hills, you know, slopes and mounds, and, and just falling and acting like little kids just to see Tiger Woods. And you hear him say, there he is, 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 there he is. Just to have a glimpse of Tiger Woods, they, in that moment, broke character. Or you could say it this way, they, in that moment, began to act like who they really were. Bro, character. Right? Because all we need is to have our favorite song start playing. For you know, you're bobbing your head, you're patting your feet, you're shaking your rump to the bump, right? <laughs> I mean, that's all you need is your best country western song to come on. And before you know, you, you're slapping a dashboard and you, you're singing it out loud and you, you know, and you, you, you follow me? J just let your good, your best tune, let, let something be played that you grew up on as a child. Something that strikes that emotion because we're all emotional beings and we all need to express what we feel. It's going to come out one way or the other. It's going to come out on something or someone. I believe what God does is gives us something called worship to express what's really on the inside. So this is how he describes it. How do we do this? This is a few things I gave you. And just in summary, three things. In your posture, in your praise, and in a certain place. Here's the first, Psalm 148. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all stars of light. Praise him, highest heaven. You hear that? Praise him, praise him. He, he's trying to make a point, right? And the waters that are above the heavens, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which will not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. Sea monsters, if you know they, they did exist, still exist somewhere. We just can't find them. In all the deep, it says, fire and hell, snow and clouds. If you don't like fire, if you don't like hell, if you don't like snow, guess what they're doing? Stormy wind, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged fowls, kings of the earth and all the people. Do you hear that? Kings of the earth 
and all the people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and virgins, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above uh, earth and heaven, and he has lifted up a horn for his people. Praise for all his godly ones, even for the sons of Israel, people near to him. Praise the Lord. In your posture, in your posture, you see it says, it's interesting, it finishes and says, people near to him. How near are you to him? Will determine how far you go with this. Your posture says in Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 14 gives us, it says, Then they stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Now Solomon had a bronze platform, five cubits long, five cubits wide, three cubits high, and set in the midst of the court. And he stood on it, knelt on his knees in the presence of, guess what? Everybody. in the presence of everybody, of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards the heavens. Why do we stand when the president of the United States come into a building? But we won't stand for the Lord. Why do we sing hell to the chief? To a man, but won't sing to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Stand up hands, bow. Genesis chapter 24, verses 26 to 27 says, Then the man bowed low and worshiped the Lord. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, who has not forsaken his loving kindness and his truth towards my master. As for me, the Lord is guiding me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. Bowing, bowing. Kneeling, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 6. Oh, come, let us sing be for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to his, him with psalms. For the Lord is great, a great God, a great king above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for what has he made in his hands form the dry land? Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. But how close are you to him? See, if you're close to someone, it's not uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. If you're close to someone, listen, you would do things that you won't, you're not accustomed to do. If you're close to someone, how near are you to him? Will determine how far you go with this. <coughs> Here you go, it gets deeper, prostrate. First Chronicles chapter 21, 16 and 17 says this, then David lifted up his, his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven with his drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders covered the sackcloth and fell on their faces. How near are you to him? How do we express this great joy? Again, our posture. But then secondly, we find in Psalm 50, we express our, our, this great joy in our praise. It says this in Psalm 50. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with string instruments and pipe. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we, can we do a test real quick like this? Guess what? You have breath. 
<laughs> right? You have breath. So that, this includes you and me. We should be doing what? Praising the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So great joy is expressed in our praise. Psalm 47, verses 1 uh, and 2 says this. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is to be feared. Can you go like this? Come on, come on, everybody. Come on, come on. Uh, all right. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Anybody have a favorite team? Anybody have a favorite team? What do you normally do? What do, you, do you, when they come onto the field, do you, do you go like this? Well, well, maybe how the Eagles are performing, you're like, right? <laughs> right? Why? It's, be, it's because, listen, gr- there's a cause for great joy. Eagles aren't performing. You're not getting my praise. You, you understand what I'm saying? You're not performing? I'm not clapping for you. But if God has performed great deeds in your life, no one should have to tell you to clap. We don't need worship leaders to tell us to shout. Right? It's because he has already done great deeds. Listen, because he, there's always, there's already a cause for me to express my joy. <laughs> Psalm 71, 23 through 24 says this, I will praise you with harp, even your truth, O my God. To you, I will sing praises with lyre. O holy one of Israel, my lips will shout for joy. When I sing praises to you and my soul, which you have redeemed, my tongue also will utter your righteousness. Listen, all day long, not just when I'm in church. Psalm 96, 1 through 4, it says, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glorious His glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all the gods. Then Psalm 126, verse 1 through 3 says, When the Lord brought back the captive ones of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful shouting. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for them. We are glad. So can we do this again? (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Now, can we do this though? Can we do this now? On three, we're going to say Jesus on three. Okay. Jesus has just walked into the room. All right. All right. Jesus has just scored a touchdown. One, Two, three. Jesus! It's okay. It's okay. All right? Kids, this is the only time you can do that in church, you know? <laughs> All right? But, but there's, there's this liberation. There's this freedom to express your praise. And he instructs us to do this. Should be in our posture. Should be in our praise. Then Psalm 149, verses 1 through 5, great joy is expressed in a place. And I believe this is where we get a little confused, biblically confused. And and let me try to preface it. We say things like, well, you know, me and God have our own worship service at home. (laughs) You know, I have the sanctuary on four wheels, you know. uh, me, you know, <laughs> you know, me and God, that's, you know, that's where I cry, I'm in the car, and, and, you know, and that's why I just let loose. You know, everybody thinks I'm crazy when they're driving by me, but that's okay, I'm not going to see them again. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and we just justify, 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 justify. But, but there's a place, yeah, that we should, we should express this great joy, and it's actually in two places. in two places. 
See, I'm of the thought as well. There's some folks that um, get to church and they perform. <laughs> In other words, because they're not, they're not worshiping him in the first place. So they get to church and they let loose. And then they get mad because everyone else isn't letting loose. Well, something's wrong with everybody else. Well, you follow me? But then the pe- it's so funny. We're so funny. The, then, then, the pe- then the people who are, who, who, are, who are letting loose in the other place, wherever that place is, get mad at other people who are letting loose publicly. And it's like, can we all get along, you know? But there's two really, there are two places that we should be uh, expressing this great joy. So let's go and, and look at this. Psalm 149, verses 1 through 5. And it's so God, cool how God is so much a God of details. It says, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. And here's the beautiful thing about this. If you can't sing, if you have a new heart, you still have a new song. So it's not about you singing on key, but it's about singing. Sing even if you can't sing. Because by the time it ascends to the ears of God, it sounds really well. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the... Where? Hmm. So if you're, if you're place one, okay, and, and this hasn't been your place... This is a new place for you. It's in the congregation. This is, for the record, is the congregation. So if you're a person that don't sing in the congregation, you're missing out on an awesome place to be participating in express, the expression of great joy. It says, let Israel be glad in his maker that the sons of Zion rejoice in their king Let them praise his name with dancing. Uh Uh-oh. You you can do the two-step in in one spot. You know, you can, you can, you know, however you however you do it, you can, you know, do the line dance, you know, (laughs) you know, up the row and things like that. In other words, there's a there's an expression. How do I say this? Listen, again, that favorite song comes on, it moves you. It you can't you can't you can't. You're going to be patting your feet. You're going to be patting your legs. Something's going to be moving when you hear your favorite song. You, you may not have known why. It's because you're created to worship something. You're going to worship something. And, and if, and if your, your expression and your, your hand claps and your shouting and your tears and your expressions of joy are for someone other than the one who has died for you, something's wrong. If you get more excited about a team or, again, about you catching that big fish or about, listen, even more excited about your son or daughter walking across a stage graduating, something is inherently wrong on the inside. If you are shouting when your son or daughter kicked that first goal and you're just, you're just turning red and snotty nose and you're crying all over the place, and, but yet when it comes into the presence of the congregation, you're holding back. Something's wrong. Let them sing praises to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord, listen to this, church, takes pleasure. You want to please God? Takes pleasure in this. He will beautify the afflicted ones with salvation. Now here's the second place, verse 5. Let the godly ones exalt in glory. Let them sing joy, sing for joy. Guess where? On your beds. <laughs> I don't know how private that could get. So you have two places, publicly in the congregation, privately 
on your back in your bed. In other words, in your home. Worship him. Communicate how joyful you are about him. There should be praise parties, if you would, in your home. You should be rattling your windows at home. Right? Because of the great deeds of our God. Which then just, can you imagine everybody in their home already tuned up? Then they come to the church. And it's like people turning back flips as they come into the sanctuary. You know, they just, oh, you know, just like the link. For you Eagles fans, our Dallas Stadium. <laughs> For you, you, you other people. <laughs> we still love you, but you know. But right, but but you see that, right? You see people, they're just, you know, matter of fact, they're tailgating. I'm, I'm not advocating. Maybe we can have a a godlike tailgate. <laughs> But, but, but can you just imagine? In other words, people are so excited about seeing their team. They there early. No pun intended. They there early wanting to get in to be the first one to get into a stadium that it hasn't even started. And they just want to watch the players warm up. Can you imagine if people just walking in, sitting here, just watching the worship team just warm up? Where worship would be. That has started in your bed before you even put your feet on the ground. You're expressing your great joy. Can you imagine how your day would go if you started in your bed? And it's interesting that the scripture says that, right? Let the godly ones exalt in the glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. So it's almost like before you even put your feet on the ground, you're already in the mood. Because you put a song in your heart. Listen, at the end of the day, here's our big idea. Transformation in Christ should always cause us to express great joy. If you have been changed on the inside, you just can't hold it back. If today you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and for whatever reason it seems like you you, you just kind of hold back, you kind of... Oh, you're not all in with it. The Lord takes pleasure in this. Do you want to please the person next to you? Do you want to please the person that you see in the mirror? Or do you want to please him? What's the right way? What's the wrong way? I've kind of summarized this way. If you know what you're supposed to do and you're not expressing it, it's wrong. So now you're all in the know. <laughs> so thus the privilege of, of we're going we're gonna to worship a couple more songs after this, so maybe you came in not knowing. <laughs> but now you know. <laughs> Here's your chance to say, let me put this in action. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little uh, feeling awkward with the raising hand stuff and the clapping. Maybe I clap on a 1-3 and you clap on a 2-4. It doesn't matter. Just, just do something. You know, just clap. You know? 
Every, let everybody clap on a one, two, three, four. Then it sounds good. <laughs> right? If it makes you uncomfortable and you're not, something's wrong. If you're afraid and then something or someone whispers in your ear and say, you know, you know you're supposed to be doing this and you don't, then it's wrong. It's wrong. That's the right and wrong. It is not really, okay, well, well, why aren't you doing it now? No, no. If he's telling you to, you know you're supposed to do it, and he's telling you to do it, and you're not doing it, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's the right and wrong in it. It's just being men and women who choose to be obedient because here's the reality. Some people struggle in doing this even in the privacy of their own home. By themselves. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. In your own home by yourself. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. But if you're near to him, it should never be. You see, at the end of the day, the good news of Jesus Christ is reason enough to express this joy. If he chooses to do not one other thing for mankind, we have enough reason to express our joy. But let me end with this. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 18 through 20 says this. For Sheol... Hell cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. Verse 9, 19. It is the living who give thanks to you as I do today. What does that say to you? If I don't give thanks to him, Am I really alive in him? A father tells his son about the faithfulness. Verse 20. The Lord will surely save me. So will, so we will play my songs of string instruments all the days of our life at the house of the Lord. Because he saved me every single day of my life will be a song unto him. And can you imagine if the church just lived that way? If they don't need messages, they don't need sermons, they don't need worship teams, they don't need, you know, worship dancers, they don't need anyone to motivate, instigate, stimulate, whatever at all, is just every single day of my life. is a melody to his ear. Every single day of my life is a dance before the Lord. Every single day of my life, I'm singing praises to him that it is everything, everything that I am, he takes pleasure in. Praise him with your posture. Express joy with your posture. Uh, praise him with instruments, songs, clapping, shouting, dancing, all the different ways that the scriptures teach. But then also, there's a place. We must become little houses of worship, independent from this house of worship. Then when this house of worship gathers as a congregation, okay, it could be so recognized, it could be so... Let me say it this way. It will shake the very gates of hell. And it will bring such pleasure to our God.
Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much just for the privilege of worship, of expressing this great joy. God, I now pray for us as we close out and sing in a, a couple of worship songs that, God, that we can put into action what we've learned today. Lord, help us to be men and women, God, that wherever we are, our lives are just uh, expressions of great joy because of our gratitude to the finished work of Jesus Christ. Spirit of God, please come. Just inhabit the praises of your people. We love you. Thank you so much for your unfailing love towards us. Thank you for listening to Commitment to Truth, the outreach ministry of Commitment Community Church. If you would like to learn more about Jesus Christ, please visit our website, www.commitmentchurch.org forward slash start. This website will walk you through having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Please let us know if you made a decision to follow Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you would like to support God's Word through this ministry, please visit our website at www.commitmentchurch.org. Lastly, if you or your family are in the South Jersey or Philly metro area, please visit us at Commitment Community Church.